Hi there, and welcome to Grey Muzzle Geekery for the week of July 22nd, 2019, episode 24. I'm Dusty Red. I'm Dusty White. And we'll get into this week's news. Amuck, amuck, amuck. Spirit Halloween stories releasing more Hocus Pocus merchandise coming soon this Halloween 2019, including a Binks Kigu Hocus Pocus travel mug and light your own black flame candle. You know, it's still July, right? Shh. Okay. Listen, every other Halloween gets to start early. Why not Halloween? That's fair. Like the summer Halloween and then actual fall Halloween and then winter Halloween. What's this? What's this? Just magic. Listen, here. I've just always enjoyed the theory of taking every 29th day of February, combine that in making everything have 30 days, and making October 32nd. Halloween part two. De esos muertos? <laughs> I've been doing it for years. Well, I'm glad you finally <laughs> caught up to me, honky. <laughs> anyway, Xbox Games and The Coalition announced that Gears of War 5 will not have the ever-popular Battle Royale mode, but they are open to the idea. Uh, They are, however, inviting people to play test their versus mode beginning last weekend and starting again this coming weekend on July 26. Shout out to Marvel from gracious now second place director James Cameron. Avengers Endgame has now dethroned Avatar from the top spot. Fun fact, Zoe Saldana plays pivotal roles in both movies, voicing Natiri in Avatar and being badass dual-wielding Gamora in Avengers Endgame. And speaking of such, San Diego Comic-Con has come and gone, having taken place on July 18th through 21st. And boy, howdy, did they have quite the lineup of teasers, trailers, and tantalizing takes on a number of your favorite <laughs> movie and news. <laughs> Why are you laughing at my alliteration? How dare you? I prepared and wrote things. So obviously that's going to be the focus of this week's episode. And let's take a moment to put the entire swimming pool of Marvel and move it to the side for a second. Because we're going to be stuck on that one for a while. Okay. So let's kind of dip our toes into a number of exciting trailers that came out and let us start with i don't know let's just go with the obvious that's high in the sky and the person who never seemed to age but wants to fly (laughs) fighter jets and there is a volleyball (laughs) montage i believe someplace in this damn movie oh gosh top gun is back what do you think uh i I'm a fan of Top Gun. I'm not going to lie. In all its 80, early 80, well, no, I think late 80s, actually. There's definitely a homoerotic volleyball montage. Continue. Um, Late 80s, um, fantastic fighter jet volleyball type short. And the Nintendo game that came from it, too. I, I, I like Top Gun. It's probably one of my top five tom cruise movies which isn't saying much because i'm not really that big of a tom cruise fan i think my top favorite would be minority report but only because i actually stopped watching tom cruise at that point because he's again that actor that it doesn't matter what he plays you're just looking at it and going no it's tom cruise yeah but it's tom cruise less deaton's and so he's (laughs) he's improved his skills and improved his abilities and every movie you watch is just tom cruise running anyway tom cruise as tom cruise it's slow most running or just like that fast explosion bounce running from mission impossible Uh, see and then i I then i go i actually kind of like the mission mission impossible movies for just what they are is stupid action they're fun action films i'll give you that they're they are enjoyably fun action films I think they might take the same tongue-in-cheek approach. Again, we're making the joke about it, but they're going to dance on nostalgia. They're going to... I'm very curious if they're going to bring back of you lost that love no, and no, no, fear. No, 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 like Honestly, of, what made Top Gun great is Kenny Lo- Loggins. He will be back. Oh! <laughs> they're, they're, from what I've heard, that Kenny Loggins, I don't know if they're reprising Danger Zone or if he's just writing another song for it. But Kenny Loggins will supposedly be back to do another song or something. I think, okay, I think I'm probably, not going to lie. I kind of would like the throwback soundtrack. Uh-huh. And they might go that route of, again, 
diving headfirst in nostalgia and just be like, yeah, because if it's Maverick, how old is Maverick at this point? Like, so I, I'm very curious to see what would be the story to draw old man back into a fighter jet and doing what he does. So. Right. I don't know. Uh, that uh, it's <laughs> it's gonna be a fun movie. Yeah, I'm sure it's not gonna be it's not gonna be like it was in the '80s where it was a genuine role, if I dare say. It was a, definitely a genuine role. Right, like you're gonna play as this Air Force pilot, and all this tragic shit's gonna happen. It's it gonna be a wasn't love story. meant to be tongue in cheek. This one's this going, would be totally. I would be surprised if this was not tongue in cheek. If it didn't have the Ferris Bueller style fourth wall break where he like looks at the camera gives a wink you know shooty <laughs> fingers and finger crossbows or whatever we call them and then you know wanders off but I, I could be wrong I, it's known to happen so we'll continue on our list we'll scratch off Top Gun there and then we have and I look at my writing and god my writing's terrible because it looks like I wrote Terminator DP but that's uh, not it. that's not appropriate for this age and audience I don't know what they're talking about they could just call it Terminator Deadpool or Dead People Ter- Terminator <laughs> Dead People <laughs> so what is it Terminator Dar- Deadfall or Dark something I didn't look it up you're bad at this. I just wrote it quick so I wouldn't forget and oh, then I forgot. Okay. So a new Terminator movie. Yes. Uh, which I did actually see the trailers. You have to understand, I'm not a trailer person. I will watch trailers here and there. Obviously, you can't avoid them when you go see the movies. Sure. So I did happen to see the trailer for this uh, when I went to see MIB International. And you go to the movies a lot more than I do, so you're going to have that. Right. And you saw MIB International. <laughs> Was it bad? Uh-huh. So the trailers are not something I will seek to to watch. You, like you'll scroll through Facebook or YouTube, and I'll I'll avoid them. But obviously, again, with seeing actual theater movies, I there's I can't sit there and like close my your eye my my <laughs> close my eyes and go la la la. But if I'm not mistaken, you did manage to avoid Endgame spoilers. I did. I all did. the way Actively. to release. Like, you're just like, oh, potential end game. I gotta I'm go not pee paying now attention. So, but Terminator 2, whatever we get, yeah, d- d- uh, actually looked kind of badass. It's essentially, it was very. Wait, the Terminator. The one you're talking about. Oh, uh, it's not Terminator 2. Terminator 2 is Judgment Day with Arnold Schwarzenegger, well, but this is the same. Terminator, it's supposedly. Yes ish. and no. Yeah, I've, I've heard about some of the randomness of... So it's essentially playing the same... I mean, every Terminator's... A, let's be honest. Every Terminator's b- blueberry muffin time... Wibbly-wobbly well, time plot. <coughs> and that's another so thing I've heard knows? is that because of the time jumps and so many time fluctuations, to go back to Marvel for a second... This isn't like, oh, you did a thing, so the timeline's going to be just an alternate continuity or some right. other book. Like, this is a legitimate, you fucked with the timeline, things are messed up now. Right. And supposedly with this new Terminator movie, things have gotten so cattywampus with the timeline that shit's kind of falling apart. Like, like existence in of itself is kind of turning inside out because the timeline's been messed with so much with time hopping and back and forth and back and forth. Right. John Connor can only be re- reincarnated so many times. So it did look really interesting, though. I've, I'll be, I, I'll admit, without seeing all of the Terminators, I have kind of like gone a deep down rabbit hole Wikipedia style <clears throat> and read a lot of things. So Terminator is something that kind of interests me just because it is kind of like the quintessential time time plot movies. And as much as I don't like Blueberry Muffin time plot, I do kind of like Blueberry and Muffin time plot. We're going to have to explain what Blueberry Muffins are for our, <laughs> At one non, point. For our non-LARPer <laughs> listeners that would be like, what? what? Why do they hate <laughs> healthy breakfast foods? What is going on? <laughs> So it did look good, and I I do enjoy the. Uh, I know we talked a little bit about it when we were talking about Little Mermaid, but it does try to touch on. No, oh, this is gonna be more female oriented pl- uh, uh, movie. Sure. As far as like some of the roles have been well, Sarah completely Connor, changed. Sarah Connor's always been a badass. Yeah. And I've also read that they kind of. I think it's the first movie that has Laura Laurel ha- Laura Hamilton coming back yes. as Sarah Connor. And they asked her to 
there was, supposedly I read that they wanted to, I forgot where, it was one of the news outlets uh-huh. or something. And I, I don't want to so much give them credit just in case they're also blowing smoke because not many people know much about these movies. Right. So you see a lot of headlines. They're like, oh, they said this, they rumored this. Like, calm your tits. <laughs> Nobody's really got full, yeah, disclosure on these things. There's non-disclosure agreements that have been signed, so I'm not going to fully take your advice on this. <laughs> Um, but rumor is, is that they're saying that they wanted Sarah Connor to be kind of toned down a little bit and like be more relatable. And she's like, nah, brah, I'm bullshit up. So <laughs> it's good to see that they wanted to maintain a level of badassery and just almost comical unrelatability to be like, nobody's going to do that. Be like, But this is still a fun movie. And you get to the point then, again, almost with the Top Gun stuff is there going to be a level of tongue in cheek. You're going to keep it as serious as possible. It's Terminator. You're going to keep it realistic. But is there well, still going to be? Well, you see in the preview, you do see in the preview that Arnold is back. Now, again, it might be something as brief as say uh, Hugh Jackman in one of the X Men movies, sitting literally at a bar, sitting in a bar and going f off. Uh, so, so who's to know what actual role he plays? But he does, he does have a role, he does have a for role. Sure. and he can't you can't have Terminator movies without Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like it's just it's I, I just think it's bad luck. Like even you just sit him in a chair and just be like Arnold, look, you're not doing anything. We know that. Just like we're not making another Expendables movie for a while, so just sit in that corner. <laughs> don't say anything. You'll be our good luck totem. So okay, so I'm gonna har- I'm gonna tangent you just whoa, a little bit whoa. because I know we we have a list of things we're going to, but I really want to know what your opinion of because I've seen it a couple of times now as far as a trailer is concerned, but the Fast and Furious, Hobbs and oh I can't think of the name Shaw Shaw thank you Hobbs and Shaw movie that's my, coming my, out my favorite in like two player. weeks. <laughs> I know Diddly Squad about Fast and Furious. Oh, uh, okay. I've only seen one. And I think it was watched with you. And it was the one where, uh, I can't remember his name. I died, unfortunately. Um, Paul Walker. Yeah, Paul Walker was the one that they did like the little homage at the end. So. Okay, so Fast and Furious 8, I think. I don't remember. I have no clue about the Fast and Furious. <laughs> Again, I'm not a movie guy, nor am I a car guy, and overly buffed testosterone. Well, the only reason... Things. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead. The only reason I brought it up was because your fa- your expendable quote sure. or your expendable reference is just a little too tongue in cheek for Hobbs and Shaw Absolutely. because it is just a replay or a reuniting of it's. Uh, I mean, it's The Rock. Uh-huh. Um, Do you smell? <laughs> uh, uh, Erdis Elba. Erdis Elba is a badass. And. I can't think of his name. Shaw. Jason Statham? Yes, Jason Statham. Hey, Thank he you. always talks like this. He's have the accent. <laughs> just the three Go of them getting thing. together and basically just being full adrenaline. Oh, it's testosterone. It's testosterone. I want to get punched in the face. I'm going to punch him in the face. <laughs> I punched him in the face. So, yeah. It's, it's, I didn't realize Statham had turned into Paul Hogan. Call this a knife. Right, thank you. <laughs> now that's the, the, a knife. The, I had a glass eye to look for a second. Why, why are we bringing up Crocodile Dundee? <laughs> Sorry. You got my reference, though. No, I, applause, I, 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 I watched a ton of Crocodile Dundee. It's a terrible movie, but it's still kind of awesome. All right. Fat and the Furious, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next, let's talk. Next you're going you're to you're tangent me. I'm no, going to go right into next, Fluffy. Moving go, on, right. moving on. So next on the uh, list of things, and there's a couple I'm going to let sit behind because there's obviously two of them I'm pretty excited about, but we'll go into, hello, Charlie. No. You know, like, it. No. We had another trailer for it. No. Scary clown movie. And it doesn't even, no. The clown part of it does not, I'm not the person that comes at, things like that and be like oh i don't i am not a horror fan person personal oh, fan jump scares are bullshit i well, don't like them i get into that point of like i like horror movies i don't like being startled so if anything i like suspense type movies right. i like movies that you're watching and they kind of build you in that ante- anticipation and like 
you're just looking like, okay, I know I need to be figured. And a really good movies, and I can't think of one offhand now, unfortunately, will set up the scene. <laughs> they won't jump scare or nothing, but they will set up those long moments of anticipation of oh god what's gonna happen or what's gonna do what like right. you, you build up a bigger more psychological monster thrillers a hundred percent than here than just like closet boo scary noise loud thing camera spins guy's face there crawling out of the, the mirror or under the bed or something <laughs> i just i don't care for those kind of movies it's it's yeah it's scary and yeah it's general like i get the appeal of it the same reason right. why people go on roller coasters or do crazy shit like they go on haunted houses eat hot wings that's not. That's a different level of fear. Um, <laughs> it's a fear of the unknown. It's going to be left in my toilet afterwards. But it's, <laughs> it's generally the that anticipatory build that isn't quite released what it is because that's what the jump scare is really. The right. jump scare is that your build a good jump scare would be build, build, build. You're now questioning life itself, and the jump scare release of endorphins at like big rush, and then it goes away, and then you kind of build like that. I'm not a I love roller coasters, right. but I don't like that build. I do like the figure things out, the psychological thriller, right. and those kind of movies I'm a big fan of. So that said, I don't like overly grotesque and horrible movies. I did see Hostel, I think it was. Oh, uh, the, the the beginning the of the g- uh, gore porn? Blah. Like, I don't care for stuff like that, but yeah. I, yeah. Uh, it looks interesting. It's going to be... It's It found... That niche and people are, I think, in a way, with all of the superhero movies and all of the other empowerment type movies that are kind of coming around. Okay. Something that strips empowerment and something that leaves you feeble feeling and whatnot is going to fill in a perfect niche for a group of people that feel left out. I don't say disenfranchised, you know, disenfranchised or anything, but just feel okay. Cool. I just saw my another superhero fly through space and punch somebody around the moon or something like that. Right. Now I'm going to get a different feel where I'm, I'm helpless. I'm along for this horror ride that it could be in some ways more satisfying than another power fantasy. Uh, Oh look, she flies from space and saves the world again. So I could, I could see that filling a very good niche. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, so we'll scratch it off the list. Um, so something you're familiar with, and I am not, because I've not read The Golden Compass, His Dark Materials. It's a HBO show? Yes. I think it, my personal opinions on it are that between His Dark Materials, which is uh, essentially the trilogy, from what I understand of it, from it is the trilogy of The, dark, uh, or the Golden Compass. Yes. Um, I think what HBO is trying to do is take the combination of his dark materials and Watchmen and... Spoiler, because that's going to be the next one. But right. We're gonna, we're gonna, we'll, but we'll, 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 okay, continue. I think it's a combination of the two that they're trying very hard to hold on to the fandom that they grew from okay so before so before we tangent on that got it anything on his dark material specifically i've watched the trailers without really knowing a lot of the back history i am interested and it's a prequel supposedly i I think it's just the book or at the beginning of the books i i think yes i think it is the basically the growing up of the the titular character in the golden compass um, how she grows up and becomes who she's supposed to be. Sure. So I'm interested to see how they do it. And it seems like it's got a very, uh, it's created by, it's dual by BBC. So it does have a kind of Harry Potter feel. Like there's a magical school where she sure. learns things and don't trust all adults. They don't always have your best intentions at heart. Which is still that true kind to this of, day. <laughs> Uh, it, it kind of has that feel to it. It's trying to appeal to a underappreciated, and you could almost go agnostic because it, it, the Golden Compass, from the research that I've done on it, is the Golden Compass actually serves as a almost, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, but basically to go against what the Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe was for okay. religion. 
as Ashlyn being as Aslan, Aslan yeah. being your Jesus Christ character, which is funny because that was actually written by an atheist, <laughs> right? <laughs> but the Golden Compass is kind of supposed to be the uh, the counterbalance to that, the okay. the different side of it. So it, I will be interested to see how that vein of storyline goes through, uh, especially on the tail tail end of things like Good Omens, and how pissed off people got about that oh i was that's still my favorite we still gotta finish watching that but (laughs) so that takes us into number two i was i guess i i should have timed it a little bit better but um i was going to save this to near last but we will go right into the watchman now obviously i am stupid excited about the watchman okay and you do love your anti-hero stories i love anti-hero stories and again police family i'm loving what they're doing with the question authority, question, you know, police, question, you know, it, it, it dances that moral line of, like, personal freedoms versus, like, why are you hide? Like, why are you wearing a mask? Are you hiding something? Are you hiding yourself? Are you hiding, like, people who wear masks have... What's the difference what, yeah, between what, a mass <laughs> re- vigilante and a mass <laughs> police, police yeah. person? And so it's, it does a, it does a lot of social commentary, especially nowadays, which gets into a, a very heavy political line that I don't think we're going to go into. Maybe on bonus episodes in the future we'll get a little <laughs> political. Um, and I got some ideas I'll talk to you off air on. But we we don't want to go into too much into the politics, obviously, but these will be very political heavy shows that will dance on the kind of the what if scenarios much like um, Handmaid's Tale where you have a did I say it right? You look yeah, no, no, no. Okay, you, you, I no. You hey, me. I, sorry, I just was starting to get back into it recently, so I just yeah, it, it, very religious. Well, not uh, religious, but it just has it's so it, it it's is moral current dilemmas. social commentary. It's social. It's current social commentary dialed up to eleven. Yes, because obviously, I mean, well, hopefully, it doesn't t- actually happen like that. But it's still it's it's fantastical. It's fantastical, but still enough to be believable if it's to happen. That said, obviously Watchmen has crazy powers and Dr. Manhattan on Mars and some other crazy things. But if you break it down in a, in a smaller scale, there's things that you can look at and look at so, you know, social justice and social commentary and what does it mean to follow orders? What does it mean to act on what you think is good and what is good? Is your moral compass so upstanding that what you're doing is going to be... I kind of like to see what they're doing. It seems like as far as the trailers I've seen thus far is that they're more focused on the everyman and what happens to the ever everyman or the normal, not like you can go even go back to X-Men universe of what happens to the people that don't have superpowers when you are being you, when you are trying to exist in a world where you have people that have superpowers eh, ish because a lot of the, the, the a lot of the heroes in Watchmen don't really have superpowers. The only one that they're really just had, vigilantes. Like Oz, Oz, uh, Ozymandias has like big intelligence, like so he's a genius. But you know, Lex Luthor's a genius and he really doesn't have powers. True. So you know, Doctor Manhattan's the only one with a superpower. But his superpowers again are so dialed up to a million. Listen, big blue dick is not a superpower. I wasn't that big. But <laughs> but it's still a case of – well, the problem with his superpower is he was able to do everything and anything. That's right. why he left. He's like, I am bored here. Bye. And peaced out to right. the moon and then Mars. So – or just Mars. I can't remember. I think he went to the moon first and then he went to Mars. So it's just a case of like he's just bored. He's bored of everything because he sees – he could already see everybody's destruction. He could already see it. And he's like, ah, I'm done. Like there's nothing here. So that's – but that gives you a scale of how powerful he is. To everybody else who are just mere bugs, but all those bugs have varying levels of power. Where you know Rorschach was, and this is, and if you notice, they're all wearing the Rorschach mask too. So I think they're gonna kind of martyr him a little bit on his view take. His I'd love to think about being a person, watching that, and still having in the back of my mind of uh, associating the Rorschach uh, mask almost to how they used Guy Fox in Anonymous. 
Like I'm, I maybe it'll be interesting to a see symbol, that connotation. A, well, let's see how they take that symbol and twist it. Yeah, does it mean the same thing? Has it become twisted? Is it a symbol of justice? Is it a symbol of hiding? Is it a symbol of corruption or thinking, calling out you're, corruption? Thinking you're doing a good thing when you're actually the bad guy, or you you want to be the tough or bad you're just guy? A pawn. You're, doing, you're just yeah. I mean, so that I am kind of looking forward to that. That'd be really good. And then we'll get into two other shows. Uh, well, we have a Walking Dead movie that's been teased and trailered about. In fact, there's supposed to be three Walking Dead. It's going to be on Rick Grimes. So whatever, Carl, oh! whatever happens with him <laughs> there and doing all of that, like I'm, I wasn't into Walking Dead. I wanted to. I and devoured it. the first season. I get puns. The first season. Ha ha ha! I didn't even get that. <laughs> It's late. Mm-hmm. Um, I devoured the first season. It was really good. Um, I'm kind of a big zombie fan. So anything that kind of scratched that itch for a long time for me was interesting. I lost my interest on The Walking Dead when I kind of realized that they were never going to give actually what happened. Like, that's the whole point. Even in the comics, I feel they don't. They just go, yep. This is the this world. This is it now. Survive. Uh, yeah, there's no there's no explanation about and what want, happened. And you want and that yeah, backstory. I'm, I, I want... I that's your LARPing, that's your LARPing skill. That's your LARPing kicking in now. <laughs> like, I want to know what happened. Well, there's an idea. Or... Because I thought they kind of hinted to it was just like a disease or something that kind of happened. But like, are you looking for an Umbrella Corp to be like, well, it's a manufactured disease. You could that- still, do, there's so many things you can play off of. And obviously that's a trope for the zombie universe is it's either a virus, it's a bad company that's released said virus, it's an angry disease. Yes, fast zombies are still zombies. There's the things that, you know, patient zero, there's all kinds of lore in the back history of how the apocalypse or the zombie apocalypse happens so i i kind of live for that i kind of want to know how this world was built and it kind of plays off of i don't like stories where it's just yes this is the world here you are now just survive like there has to be some kind of 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 back history for me to get involved and be like okay i'll deal with the story development and getting to enjoy the characters and maybe and i think the walking dead kind of lives this life of don't get attached to anybody sure because who knows what's going to happen sure it's how i live my life it's it's game (laughs) it's game of thrones style however it's i i just kind of need that I need to know what happened to make this suddenly go world operates and now the world doesn't. So let's tangent back for a second because I did not so much cut you off, but I wanted to point out one thing at a time. And I want to go back to the fact that you're saying between Watchmen and The Dark Materials both being HBO shows as well. Right. So HBO is going to be the flagship for today's HBO Go if you haven't canceled it from the Ga- last... The end of the Game the of, of Thrones. Game of Thrones. But you mentioned to me that you see that they're going to try to grab onto that. Audience. I think they're going to try to retain what they have. So if There's a you, fantasy vibe there. Right. It's fantasy vibe. For both shows, really. Like, superheroes are still a form of fantasy that you have... Kind of supernatural powers, be it, you know, if speed or whatever else. Like, right. It's not, yeah, it's not fantasy in the sense of swords and stuff like that, but even even dark materials. I think both, both worlds or both stories have grand world building potential. It's not just thrust you into this position or thrust you into this world and you're kind of led to believe whatever's put in force in front of you. Sure. I think between Watchmen and His Dark Materials, you are giving more series growth as far as look at this world we can build. These are the multiple storylines we can um, build into the the world and get you to enjoy several basically mini stories within the grand scheme of the, the series. Do you see uh, Watchmen having multiple character deaths? I would I would believe that Watchmen is more likely to have more character deaths than I think his Dark Materials sure. will. I, and I'm wondering I'm wondering if 
Watchmen is going to focus on because it seems like it's you know pretty involved around like three or four characters that are going to like really focus on them. Like Jeremy Irons, I think is Ozzy Mundeus in there, so I'm kind of excited about that. But do you think they're going to start killing like introduce a character, kill it off, introduce kill it off to kind of give that Game Finality. of Thrones vibe? Well, Game of Thrones vibe. Like people are always looking of it, it's very much like a, an auto race where you're watching like. Oh, I hope somebody gets I, off, or I hope, you know, who's going to well, die this week? If you know, they got betting pools, do... Vegas betting pools on who gets <laughs> killed this next week. Like, So I would go off of, if they're not going to play that vibe, they will definitely play the Watchmen more seductive, seduced, possibly more sex on So kind of the fetish, the fetish, the the, fetish side the, of... They did that uh, the in superheroes. The, well, they did that in Watchmen, the, the, movie. Well, the, the comic more so, but they definitely did it in the movie uh, or the graphic novel. I yeah, know, I, I was going to correct you. I know some listeners going to slap me for saying that, but in the in the graphic novel, it definitely had more of a, like, what, this is kind of fetishy. Like, yeah, all right, let's bang. So they have that whole, like, acceptance of it, but, I mean, hey, again, we established no king shaming. Like, if you want to dress up as Catwoman and make out with your penguin i mean batman or whatever. <laughs> danny vito is hot no okay um so any more on that one no I, I i think i'm interested to see both of them uh progress and see if they uh, see if hbo's gamble pays off so we've got well technically we've got two more but the next one i'm going to talk about is the witcher it is a book a video game, and now it's going to be a TV show. I played a bit of the video game, and it's pretty cool. Uh, the game itself was just really, really detailed, and as you're waving that fan around, it's distracting. It's warm in my apartment. I apologize. <laughs> I don't want to have the AC blared in the background because I can't edit that noise out. But so, Henry Saval said he feels the best. Henry Saval? Caval? Caval, Saval, Serval. Superman. Among other things. but So he's going to be as uh, Gerald, Gerald, yeah, Gerald, as the main character. And they're already saying it's going to be different from the games. It's got to be different from the books. It's got to kind of be its own entity because it's, again, I had the game and played through a good chunk of it, but it's a multi-hour, highly detailed game right. that did a good job and like, there's a bad guy. How do I kill it? And it's like buried in your journal. You actually have to read the journals. You have to actually like do research on how to kill these things. You just can't walk up to it and be like, yeah, I'm 50th level. I'll just stab it in the face. And it's like, haha, I'm immune to face stabbing. You're like, <laughs> this shit. And so you have to like, I mean, you gotta out. admit that's a pretty badass superhero move if you're just oh, immune you can kick it. to face you can stabbing. Just, you can kick it in the shin and it falls over, but it's immune to face stabbing. <laughs> F off, Wolverine. <laughs> So uh, just and I don't uh, and admittedly I will say I do not know much about The Witcher and the show that's coming out, but I do feel I have to announce it because it could be one of those sleepers. Yeah, where, that's what I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a sleeper where not, you've got your your fantasy their back. fantasy background. You'll get your you'll get your Game of Thrones fans coming out of the woodwork, and going. you've got your fandom that is loyal. I've sure. heard people talk about it, and I've heard them be just rabid fans of it, of cannot get enough. So I, I think it will be a sleeper hit, and they will be able to possibly progress what they want to actually... Because I always kind of like hint around when it becomes a game, a game that evolves into something more, Sure. where I wonder how much of that is the game developers hoping that there's a backstory that gets told that they can't really do game style ways. Well, but there's also novels. So there's going to be a lot of information that's out there that's going to be left for the reader, the player, the viewer to find. There's always going to be lores. And, and again, depending on how true it keeps to... I was going to say, what's canon things, and what's not. It may, yeah, it may not even be off of the game or off of the books. It may have its own. Again, Game of Thrones is another good example. Like halfway through Game of Thrones and now it's a separate story from the book but you just kind of roll with it you accept it for what it is you can sit there and piss and bitch your own all day long well it's not the same he had green hair me 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 or you could accept it for the medium that it's on and roll with it and actually have a more enjoyable experience again don't geek shame that <laughs> you just roll with it with what it is and if you can enjoy all three mediums if you can play the hell out of the game and love it read all the books and love it and watch the whole series and love it then 
there's nothing wrong with getting more of your favorite. Right. I, I'm down for it. I, I support it. Now, obviously, if you're that's a lot of t- a time put into a thing. Right. But if you're into it, enjoy oh, it. Go for it, man. Go for it. I hope you got a good thing. And then finally, I cannot go further without mentioning this. CBS show that's coming out that I know some of our friends, if I'm not mistaken, was damn near in tears when he saw the <laughs> teaser trailer. But so Captain excited. Jean-Luc Picard of the USS Enterprise. Captain Jean-Luc Picard. So, yes. <laughs> See, oh, you remember that song? Yes. All right. Who, who hasn't had AOL and downloaded that song? Ever? Early early memes, basically. Uh-huh. Like, like albino black sheep type stuff or all that stuff. So Go here, on. So here's the art chilling. Man, it's a sweet looking art. Around. Yeah. I, I, and as I watch his gray muzzle no, get fuck. crazy. No, crazy. fires and missiles. But I'm really <laughs> tired. Then has a nap. Then fires and missiles. Focus. Right. So, Picard. Yes. They teased, like the initial tra- teaser trailer was him in a field growing wine. And mentioned that, you know, he read, he, he was the leader of uh, the the greatest rescue armada in history and kind of fluffed up his resume his, his resume and made him a legendary hero he's a hero he's a legendary character and now he's old and retired and has his own little place and he's done like Patrick Stewart's no spring chicken so right now 93 is he? I, I, I would look that up before you okay, start quoting sorry, that nonsense go. Because we have people have chomping, <laughs> screaming numbers right now. Keep Remember, going. Remember, it is... Co- Keep cur- going. Currently, it is July 23, 2019. <laughs> so, Dusty White is saying that he's in his 90s, and she is... Uh, dead air, dead air. Just keep talking about okay. Ricard. Yeah, because you can like, just scream a number at me. I was way off. Yeah. 79. There we go. Sorry. I was about to say, he... I knew he wasn't 80 yet. <laughs> Whoops. 79. He's not that old. But, no, I know Shatner is up there. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and he's still doing Priceline commercial. Anyway, so back to back to Picard. The, the better of the two captains. Oh, drawing lines. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Uh, jokes aside. So they did the teaser, teaser trailer, and they obviously hinted, like, hey, we got a new show. They're kind of digging them up from a speaking of expendables they're digging them out of retirement like we need you well now they go into a the san diego comic-con had a much longer trailer that showed bits of data and uh in huh. the bin good good call bits of it's bits of B- data. bits of data um that so uh what did he do Res- uh he uh sacrificed himself so, in one of the movies, uh, oh, I'm getting yelled at now. I can't think of uh-huh. Star Trek. Now, you're anyway, talking- now I'm in trouble. I know the movie and I can't think of it offhand because I did my research earlier. But I'll, skip, I'll brush over it, hand waving, hand waving. <laughs> also, spoilers, I guess. They give, they give you an answer. No, but so they show that. Then they show a board cube. Yeah. Which is immediately going to be controversial. A huge deal there. Then the first, and again, I'll give spoilers if anybody, spoiler warning to anybody who hasn't seen the trailer, Seven and Nine makes an appearance. Uh-huh. And then, I'm, we're not sure if it's Data, Lore, or Before. Right. Makes an appearance as well. So, obviously they're doing a, from the vibe that I got is very, and it's funny because it's the same actor, it has a very Logan the movie Logan feel to it of you're getting to see the tail end of whatever spin is going on going of whatever through. character that Patrick Stewart's playing but like now you have Picard he's older like he's not spry and running around and doing things he is definitely it feels like that he's along for this ride that people need him for guidance for it feels like that there's going to be a bunch of other characters that are going to rise up and be important and thankfully, Star Trek doesn't need a crazy ton of stunts. Right. So he'll have a he'll have the the comfort of being able to do him and be Captain Picard. I'm very curious because they have this other character, and again, this character, the the, the female character, uh, the child that he needs to like look after or protect. I'm assuming she's 
potentially Borg would be my guess. Maybe. But focusing on her and she needs help and there's something shady about her past, again, has a very Logan feel to it of who is this girl? What's going on? The world's got a very sepia tone to it of like, I don't know, there's something about it that really feels reminiscent of the movie Logan. And I don't know if it's just because it's Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart, Stewart. Or, right. Or if it has that feel of, she so has got a mentor or somebody, there's a mysterious past about a young girl, there's old characters coming up so other people could react on to, and it's some fan service, but also could, like, 709 is going to have a vital, crazy role, especially if it has anything to do with the fucking Borg. Right. So, I am, I, I'm actually... Seriously considering jumping on board for the show right. just so I can keep up. And I don't keep up with a lot of like monitors. Like I'm I'm definitely a Wikipedia fan. Like I know a <laughs> lot about a lot of series and a lot of shows because I could go through and what would take you twenty something hours to watch every episode in a season. Right. I'll just blitz through it, read it all, read the synopsis, be like, okay, cool. I sounds like I got a good it. story, moving on. This, I think, Picard may be a show that I get a antenna for my TV so I could get CBS and watch it. All right. And actually make a, you know, make a thing to be like, okay, when is it on? I'm going to dedicate some time to sit and watch episodes. Or at worst, I could find it online someplace and enjoy it. Enjoy something that's new to everybody. But with a slight tinge of nostalgia. And have that nostalgia and see where they go with the story. It seems highly, like, it seems like a high budget is put into this. It looks beautiful. The story has a bit of longing and a bit of bittersweetness there. Like, you don't just end up on a vineyard by yourself without something happening. It's got a sense of closure which unless you were unless you felt like you got closure before it actually you go in knowing okay i need to accept whatever happens here Maybe. but i know oh, that it's, I, will, I will argue with you on that it's a do closure you, do you have to accept what happens there could it be just a simulation loop like uh, I, but but how do you watch it could be I mean, another like remember picard, picard, or picard, picard met picard met kirk when he was stuck in that fucking weird time loop and everything. So are you, is it going to do something like that? Are they going to do Listen, something? Listen, if they Twin Peaks it and everybody's <laughs> in the freaking <laughs> snow globe, so many people are rioting. For sure. So, uh, but I'm not saying that's going to happen, but you have to almost take every, to me, it feels like you have to take every like teaser and every trailer of this show with a grain of salt because you don't know if it is just a memory or a holographic, you know, uh, a, a holodeck simulation or something else. So there's that added mystery to it of, am I actually seeing what am I seeing? Or am I being misled? Or am I being, you know, are you going to, they could show a major character and be like, no, it's just a memory and go from there. So it's, they have a lot to work with because it's a huge fan base. It's right. a, and they're Lots not going to do it. Lots of things they can play with. And I think it's a safe bet of, I don't think they're going to do it. They're not going to do it dirty. I don't see them. I don't see them messing up the show. I think they're going to treat it with the utmost respect that it deserves. They're going to really pour into it and make sure it is. They tell this story to their absolute best ability, and in a cheesy way, it sounds like a safe bet for anybody who wants to catch a probably a damn good TV show, like a. a you know, a no a no brainer and an automatic home run unless they just shit the bet on this thing. Yeah, Picard could just be that show where it's like, Yeah, did you catch it? Yeah, duh, like Game of Thrones. Did you see it? Duh, who hasn't seen it? Right. This guy. So <laughs> So hopefully that'll be a good on that. I'm of the of that list, that particular list, I am focused myself on Watchmen and Picard. Those are the two I'm looking forward to. Do you have two that you're specifically looking forward to? I will be for I will be interested in his uh, his material his, his dark, dark materials. materials sorry okay. I will definitely be interested to see the first episode I will be interested to see if it will hold my interest after that fair and then obviously Top Gun uh, I mean now that I know that Kenny Loggins <laughs> is gonna be soundtrack too. <laughs> 
Listen, it was one of my dad's favorite soundtracks. So I knew that forward uh, and backwards as a kid. So I will be interested to see if that it, that scratches that itch for me. Easy. Kids show. Kids show. <laughs> So, we're going to the meat of the topic as we're already 44 minutes into the show. So, can we wrap this up in 15 minutes? Probably not. San Diego Comic-Con and Marvel Studios. Marvel basically went, surprise, we have a bunch of crap coming out. Well, phase four. Phase four. Phase three ended with... uh, uh, No... Phase three technically ended with uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. Far From Home, sure. Well, they could call that the start of Phase Four. But no, it's it's the ra- it, it, as somebody who's it seen up. it fair, versus fair. somebody that hasn't Whoa, yet. Oh, calling so me I'm, out! And I'm not and, and I'm not going to spoil anything for anybody. It just it has a sense of finality as far as wrapping up some other theory, even actually theories and conversations we've talked about here on Gray Muzzle Geekery. Check out our past episodes <laughs> that talk about. The what the the aftermath of a bunch of people coming back sure. for five years later it, it it wraps that kind of all up and almost puts deals a little bow with, on it puts a bow on it and also kind of deals with the audience is mourning along with other people in the the actual story sure so it wraps up that finality of phase three and okay. goes it, it kind mm. of leaves it open for phase four which is interesting because the start of phase four. Which is going to come out May first, twenty twenty. Is Black Widow. I am not looking forward to this. Really no. And then this is where it gets interesting. Where we say Phase Four because this is clearly going to be a prequel. I have here Scarlett Johansson is back as Black Widow. This is a uh, prequel, as confirmed by Kevin Feige. Which, if you've seen Endgame, you know, spoilers. No, not, not, not saying anything. So, <laughs> it's a prequel. Uh, this does take place between uh, Captain America Civil War and Avengers Infinity War. Interesting. So, this is where this story is going to take place. Huh. So, this is going to... Uh, it looks like the villain is going to be the Taskmaster. Whose okay. special power is like a photoreflexive memory. So he just like watches somebody do a thing and then he could do the thing. So if he's going to watch, obviously it looks like he's going to keep an eye on Black Widow and he's going to be able to fight like her because he's going to watch her fight and he's going to learn to fight like her. But if he watches Captain America like throw and catch a shield, he will know how to do that. Interesting. So he learns things by watching people. So that's Taskmaster's power. But yes, this is going to take place in that time between Avengers Civil War or uh, Captain America Civil War and Avengers Infinity War. So it's that gap where now what's going to figure out with her. It's just going to have flashbacks to her past. And well, maybe and that's kind of what I would want to see if I were... It, obviously, I will see it. But it, for me, as someone who has liked Black Widow from onset, I would have liked to have seen... And I, I've actually done some of my, my research um, for it with previous other podcasts talking about Black Widow and Black Widow's history in the comic books, there, I, w- I would like to see an, or it's one of the characters that I would actually want to see an origin movie of. You're not getting a, oh, the poison spider bit Peter Parker again, right. the 17th so, time ever. Sure. But I want to see that. You kind of saw it in. Well, I think, and what they're saying, what they're hinting at is they're going to go flashbacky. So they're going to have moments, and I'm sure it's going to be where she's going to run into old friends or old people or whatnot. Because it looks like it's a lot of Russian bad guys and a lot of Russian okay, history. Okay. So she's going to run into her friend growing up and enemies and people that also trained with Black Widow. And Black Widow was better. So <clears throat> these people are jealous or... Being rivals, used as- the rivals are jealous, or whatever else. And obviously, if it's going to be part of the MCU for Phase Four, they're starting off with a pre- like a prequel, basically. So it tells you that something in this this series is going to be key to something that happens after Endgame. And I think that's where the tricky part's going to be is paying attention to wait, why why would Marvel 
tell a prequel story? Why would they tell something about Phase 3 again? Right. Even Phase 2, if you want to go that far. Like, could Civil War be Phase 2, start of Phase 3? I'm I'm not sure my timeline okay. for the first so, but, but three. If that's where, but if that's where you're dancing that line, then why is it important to start your new phase? By on, backtracking. On backtracking, unless you're trying to point something out. To be like, look at this thing over here that we're just going to blur in the background. Maybe it's the human torch flying by. Or maybe it's something for future movies to be like, oh, that puts these pieces together. Because then this is where we get weird. Um, Marvel announced one, two, three, four. They announced five movies. Okay. Obviously the first starting with Black Widow. They, however, also padded their Disney Plus channel with one, two, three, four, five TV shows. And actually, technically, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven movies. But the seventh movie is in the talks, and it's... It's I'll get not to confirmed that. I'll get, to, I'll, get, I'll get there later. But, so you have Black Widow, May 1st, 2020. Then, you have two things happening back-to-back... In basically fall of 2020, you then have the Eternals, okay, which is Neil Gaiman. Uh huh. But then for the Disney, the uh, Disney Plus show, they have Falcon, uh, the Falcon and the Winter Sh- Soldier. Falcon. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So, obviously, I can see the joke being there of who's going to wield Captain America's shield for a little while. Are they going to fight over who who's Captain right. America? Right. Like. In a way, it'll do better. I buddy, can see. Buddy cap movies. It'll be, you know, what? Uh, I don't know how long these episodes are going to be. Maybe an hour-long episode or 45-minute episode. You'll get six or eight of them. Kind of like it, Stranger uh, Things where you get like eight I think ten. it'll be more towards, um, obviously, the pre, pre-set, the, the base that Netflix put out with... You know, what Jessica Jones, episodes? Jessica Jones, Daredevil, those, those types of premises. They'll get like maybe seven or eight episodes, okay. but they'll be released all at once, and it'll sure. be a really good. Overarching, so it's a longer yeah, movie. Good, good overarching story. So that's going to be fall of twenty twenty, and that'll be a show. But you're probably going to be able to tell more information about that show in the grand scheme of the universe, because at this point, you could slow play some of your moves. You can release pieces of information that you're not trying to cram into a two or three hour movie. Because even then, some of the critics with um, Infinity War and Endgame, with the two of them being, what, six hours long, basically? Right. You put the two of them together, it's almost six hours. We still a lot of stuff crammed in that amount of time. Where here, you've got two characters, possibly more with guest cameos, that are going to tell a story in... Eight hours, nine hours, right. give or take. So that'll be interesting to see what kind of story they could tell out of that, how long they could expand that. Um, then obviously the Eternals will be November 6th of 2020, which is, I think that's going to be the Thanos, so to speak, of getting an idea of who the Eternals are. Right. They were sent by the Celestials or tasked by the Celestials to protect the planet or protect something. Which then, any time you look at a story that a group or people or an organization tells somebody else to go protect or do a thing, chances are they're shady themselves. Right. So what are the Celestials really up to? What's all that going to be about? So I think that's going to... Pre, it's the pre-setup, just like Thanos took so long to set up for the, the final end game. Eternals will be a setup for... Because right. Eternals are also crazy powerful. Yeah. So what do you do with these crazy powerful characters except use them as a storytelling medium to flesh out other bits. Why is, who is this? What's going on? Why are they doing this? Um, then from there, we'll go right into 2021, which already sounds like crazy distant future. Like that's not a thing. But, but it's not. That it's not. Like even Black Widow's out in 10 months. Right. Which is in 2020. So then we have in, on February 12th, we have Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Which is weird because it's like giant space dragon. He's saying she's a martial artist. You're going to deal with the real Mandarin instead of the one that the I The fake Mandarin. With, which part of the talk about is that. So that right there gives you your tie back to Iron Man in some way. And right. And maybe you'll run into cameos there of 
who knows how long in the future that is, you know. I, I don't know who might make an appearance and who might be old enough, but I'm sure they love us 3,000 as well. And then we also have, um, let's see, in 20, ah, here we go, spring of 2021, Loki. I am on excited Disney Plus, about this one. Which I'm not even going to lie. That's going to be a TV show. So you're looking at another nine episodes. Right. Now, do you know which Loki this is? Well, it's being played by Tom Hiddleston. No, incorrect. Well, I yes, it is Tom Hiddleston, but which Loki? Well, if you're go, they've set it up pretty nicely in Endgame that Loki obviously survives. The last, the last memory that this particular Loki is going to have is being flung around by the Hulk. Fair. Beauty God, like that Loki is who you're going to be dealing Released with in this, on this, is going this to world. Be. So it's not the, I've grown, I've come to, you know, I'm still a trickster, but my brother and I... I and my family, my family love, and the, the me redeeming my people is the, yeah. the now, that's save. that one. This is the, I am pissed at the world. I just got beat. I just got my ass whooped by a giant green giant. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. <laughs> And now my plans were getting thwarted, but hey, what do you know? Fortuitous circumstances made this thing happen, and... I'm out. (laughs) Deuce, bitches. I'm out. And then next, we have, of course, in spring of 2021 as well, WandaVision. What? You know I haven't heard of WandaVision? Nope. Okay. So what they're doing with WandaVision is it's going to be a little bit of a gender swap scenario. Okay. Where Wanda, Red uh, Red Scarlet, or Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch. Red Scarlet. Red, red. Uh, Scarlet Witch (laughs) is Sans Vision. Got it. Okay. WandaVision. But that's also going to be a show. And so it's probably going to dance that multiverse and that line of trying to it feels like a black mirror okay episode where she's gonna try to reconstruct vision and try to bring him back she is crazy powerful she is so try to bring back vision but it's not really gonna be vision it's gonna kind of be listen if supernatural is not taught anybody ever in the fandom of anything is the dead stay dead. Oh, I learned that lesson from Full Metal Alchemist. But okay, <laughs> <laughs> all the same tropes. Uh, so, WandaVision, I don't have much on. They're kind of keeping it a little on the hush hush side because it's gonna probably be... still in development. Well, I, I mean, like. spring of twenty twenty one, so it's going to be a little bit. But they are going to have interesting concepts where I think now again they're going to start dancing on weirdness. And what they could kind of get away with. Because this is also going to tie into the next movie on our list. Which supposedly is going to be Marvel's first horror movie. I think I've seen the preview for this. I might not be wrong, but... And this comes out on May 7, 2021. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Okay, so it's not what I was thinking of. But, okay, the multi multiverse of madness. Interesting. So, what looks like they're going to do to Doctor Strange is kind of... got to remember, Doctor Strange is a smug, pompous surgeon who then had his moment With a of, flying carpet. Who then... Well, before a flying carpet. And then had his moment of just like, Ooh-hoo-hoo, I'm not good enough. And then just like, oh, now I'm a fucking smug sorcerer supreme. So, (laughs) that smugness is going to get smacked off his face if he's going to play the multiverse line, which I think is going to be the theme for much of uh, four and, or for phase four, phase five, moving on, of multiple continuities or multiple storylines slash... Multiple what ifs. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that. (laughs) I saw it. (laughs) Because... Summer of 2021 is going to be an animated series by Marvel called What If. 
voiced by most of the original actors your, your and actresses, voice, right? Your voices are going to be your original actors and actresses. Okay, to the okay. point of even though um, Chris Evans and uh, RDJ are like, we done? Money talks. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're like, look, dude, you could just stay home and talk into a microphone. Just say these things. Right. Deuces. And let them. And still make a lot of money. make a lot of money. And and also, I'm sure these actors will also be pretty happy about rolling into the studio in sweatpants and a (laughs) t-shirt. Scream into a mic for an hour at the most. Right. And then go home with a new car. I mean, it worked for Vin Diesel and... I am Groot. Yeah, he, he learned how to say that in multiple languages. Yeah. He also ate Groot. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's four years of Spanish right there, ladies and gentlemen. It's all I got. Don't ask that baño. Dos más cervezas, por favor. Anyway, so, so the What If is going to be animated. And it looks like, because already people are looking at the image that was put on there. And if you zoom in to the What If logo, one of the first images that comes clear is a zombie wearing Captain America suit. Dun, dun, dun. So they might go back into the, they might touch into the Marvel zombies. Another thing is if the super serum was not given to Bucky or to Captain America, but who do you think it was given to? You caught me completely off. Love interest, come on, is it? The what? Love interest, come on. Jane Carter? What if Jane Carter got the super, super, uh, superhero serum and like so? Or Peggy Carter, not Jane. Oh my gosh, please don't kill me. Peggy, Peggy, Peggy. (laughs) So Peggy gets the super superhero serum and she becomes a hero, and so it's a lot of what if. And it's animated, so it adds. I think the anime is a good call because it adds a level of not serious, right? But at the same time, they can add in a variety of characters and a variety of scenarios. I'm interested to see if maybe they also add in um, kind of like what they've been doing on Netflix with series of different animators doing the art. Single episode style, maybe that they're not all the well, same from, art. From what I'm hearing, the the art quality of what of what if is supposed to be top notch. Like they are again, it's Disney. They are not sparing any expense to get this point across. Um, then we go into one of our last movies, Thor: Love and Thunder. So this is be on November fifth, twenty twenty one. And while the deal was inked six months ago, right, Natalie Portman will be taking up the mantle of Thor, goddess of thunder. I would have loved to have been the fly on the wall for that negotiations because Natalie Portman begrudgingly did Thor and Thor Dark War. I guess I shouldn't say Thor, but... Definitely begrudgingly did Thor She wasn't too. happy. She wasn't happy with Thor because she didn't have much of a part in it. And she's used to playing a little bit more of a major role. She was just a love interest. At the end of the day, she was a love interest in Thor. And then in Thor 2, I know she was pissed when the original director got canned. Right. Because it was a female director. Right. She got canned and then just kind of put Natalie Well, in she was also partner. locked in. And she's another one of those actors that get, or actresses that gets locked into, you have to play four movies. We don't care what they are. Just be in. But you are going to be in four movies at some point. Sure. And they have to fulfill those contracts Mm -hmm. um i'm pretty sure edward norton was one of those people that ended up in the incredible hulk right but he hates it broke broke contract so badly that he didn't want to continue to go do do for it so natalie i think is i'm interested to see what strings they pulled to get her back on board i mean i'm pretty sure the spring string like you want to have the conversation now I'm going to say some words and your reply is more. That's it. Ready? We want to pay you. More. Okay, we're going to give you blah million dollars. More. Blah million dollars. More. (laughs) (laughs) Ta-da! Negotiations done. That's the fly on the wall. Right. So, money talks. Um, I think also giving her the starring role. 
you know, she's going to be Thor. Like, the girl looks like she could eat a, like, needs to eat a sandwich is well, supposedly going to get Well, she'll even look jacked. like more, more needing to eat a sandwich next to Fat Thor. So, well, we'll see if that continues. Right. I think he may clean up and do all that. No more, no more dad bod shaming. <sighs> but they might play that storyline where... Because that's a million dollars. Like, it's a million things. Like, Molnir was destroyed. Mm-hmm. Mol- uh, Molnir's back, though. But it was returned. From the different timeline. So Molnir's gone. I don't think In was- that timeline, it would be gone. So if we're playing with that same timeline, that Molnir would be gone. Uh, okay. So now we're wondering where, like, does she... Where is does she it from fall? a different time? Does she in- inherit Stormbreaker? So did they just give Natalie Portman the Molnir prop? Because it's more recognizable. You hand her a frosty, crazy-looking axe. You're like, oh, look, it's God of War 4 or something like that. Like, she's starting it or something. But you give her Molnir, it's very clear. Okay, she's playing Thor. But is where is Molnir? Is it going to be reforged? Is it coming from a different timeline? Is, right. Is Loki going to fuck too. with everything? And mess with some of the timelines with him jumping back and forth, which now goes into one of the things that I really wanted to talk about. Well, two things I'll talk about. One, so in Thor, they're saying that because uh, Valkyrie will be back, and they're talking about making more strides for LGBTQ. Okay. So they want her to find her her queen, and they want Valkyrie to find a love interest, and they want to kind of go more LGBTQ. Which got me sitting there thinking, and this is going to go into Red Reptilian rants a little bit, but not really, in the sense of... So, we're in the act of being inclusive and having more stuff represented, when are they going to be able to have an LGBTQ villain? Technically, they already have one. Which one? Loki. Uh, Loki, no, for sure. if, I'll give you that. if you follow some of the comics no, or you actually follow some of the um, the stories or the the um, mythology of Loki. Well, he, the comic or? Both. Okay. He can be. Bisexual. Any, any gender or sure. species he wants to be. So at the core, he's bisexual, but he'll make the physical fit the external. Yeah. He can be whatever he wants to be. He's, he's, bifro- he's, he's bifrost sexual. I get it. That's fine. <laughs> How long have you had that one? No, in your I just pocket? now came up with that, actually. You're, you're I'm ridiculous. Dead, I, obviously, that's why I stayed quiet for a minute because I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's too good. Okay. Loki is bifrost sexual. Okay. So, but then that's fair. I'll give you that because I was thinking about it a little on my own. I'm just like. At what point are they able to do? Because obviously it's dangerous waters. You don't want to just all of a sudden. You want to be inclusive, but you don't want to be like, oh, well, they painted oh, this. Oh yeah, here we're going to be inclusive, and now we've made it the villain. Yeah, the the, the you know the gay man or gay woman is now the villain here. Like, gee, now look at that. The the whitey white Captain America, blonde hair, blue eyes is beating up on the gay kid. Like, right. At the same time, I'm very curious to see if they can. I guess Loki is a really good example. Of, but if they could. Make a character that would fit these other levels of inclusivity to not make it seem that they're beating up on this villain, but to make a villain interesting, to make a villain, at that point, you dance out a villain and go into more anti-hero or right. more, you know. A- I think it's interesting to see, I, I'm interested to see how they play the out, play out the Valkyrie uh, story timeline, line, the sure. storyline. Um, I think that actress does a fantastic job playing that character and and being the disenchanted or disenfranchised Valkyrie in Thor three no Thor two yeah Thor three um, Ragnarok. So I I'm interested to see how she plays that out and obviously depending on again what timeline that you play, um, you are is it. While they're transitioning into in game, and she's hanging out at the the fishery or the she's dock, still the the, you know. the dock the dock yep. worker, or are you doing it post in game? Like I'm interested to see how they play that out. That'll be that'll fun be fun to watch, and that'll be in twenty twenty at the end of twenty twenty one, and now movie that we're gonna put in a docket are talking about possibly twenty twenty two, possibly twenty twenty three is Blade. 
The series? That's going to be a movie. I thought it was going to be just a series on Disney. And from what I'm Disney hearing, Plus. it's going to be a movie. Okay. So I'm in. I'm not sure what they're going to, and that may be some of the negotiations of figuring out, is it going to be a movie? Is it going to be a Disney Plus show? Um, Wesley Snipes already went out, and gave his thumbs up, like... Hey, I'm not hey, mad. Hey, you fellow I, I day walkers. My fr- yeah, job, I appreciate right. my fr- fans being upset for me, but nah, we're we're good. Like, I'm excited to see this person and see excited. He's excited to see where this this series or the movie has the potential to go. And so now the big thing I wanted to touch on is how do you feel? Because obviously Disney is doing this very intentionally. How do you feel about? the MCU having a level of gatekeeping to get more of the story because you have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Okay. that is in the Marvel Universe and it's taking place while the rest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going on but it's a side story it's they're doing their thing however Disney Plus is very is very clearly saying that these TV shows that are going to be on our exclusive network, our exclusive channel, is going to be associated or fill in spots for these movies. So now it's just not a, well, I'm going to go see Avengers. I'm going to see Avengers 2. I'm going to go see this. I'm going to go see Captain America. I'm going to fill in the story from there. But now it's a, now oh. I Now if I don't see these shows, now I might be lost when I go see. So I want to go see Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, but Scarlet Witch is going to be in there. And I don't, A, want to pay whatever a month to get Disney Plus. Or even, I mean, there's obviously other ways to get it. But I don't want to pay. I'm going to be an upstanding citizen here and not pay X amount of money to see this and for me in particular invest eight nine hours right. to catch up on this one show because right now if you're kind of new into the MCU it's a little daunting like you want to watch Endgame and you really haven't seen much of this stuff you have to sift through 20 something hours, 48 hours, was how many hours of it? 23 hours, I 23 think. 23 hours, yeah, it's like something like that. Yeah, I guess. Of movie to get to that point. So now, to get to phase four, if you're going to be remotely interested, you're going to have to get through these movies plus eight hour chunks Falcon and Winter Soldier, Hawkeye. Which is fall of 2021. Uh, WandaVision. That's the one thing I didn't mention is Hawkeye yet. But I get it. I mean, well, we could mention that real quick. It's Hawkeye, Jeremy Rayner. He's going to be training female Hawkeye. It's a world of... We live in a world of superpowers. We don't have superpowers. God but speed, I can kid. Hit a target. Yeah, we hit a target. Just kid. take everybody out by the knee. It's fine. Oh, I used to be the adventure once. Um, so, that's... And I don't want to cut short Hawkeye, but there's really not much to say there. I think they're going to... It might be the sleeper hit. It seems to be a sleeper hit. I mean, looking at the, 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 the logo of it, it looks interesting. The concept's there. It could be something that grounds the suit, like all of the MCU. We're like, they're going to get so fantastical between Listen, Doctor Strange. Listen, we Thor. all know Haw- Hawkeye is MCU's Hufflepuff, okay? Uh, I mean, yeah, they pissed him off and he ruined everybody. I agree. Right. He was like, I'm going to be with my family. I'm going to do this. Life is good. Then bad things happen. And he went, F you all. You are all dying. Yeah. Even even when they're like, hey, you probably shouldn't do this anymore, I will kill you too. (laughs) Anyway, Uh Tandy aside. So I I get where you're going with it as far as... So you have the intimidation factor. Yeah, but it's it's MCU's... A, it's their right. Sure, absolutely. They 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 want to make money. They print money. Right. And honestly, I don't fault them. If nothing else, the... There's a clamoring. I th- here here's here's my dual sword here, my dual edged sword. There's enough fandom out there that is clamoring for a certain number of these things, like people. Excuse me, um, series like Loki and um, WandaVision and things like that. There's going to be enough fandom out there that is clamoring to see it. 
on the same side, you've already got a lot of your fandom going, or, or I shouldn't call them fandom, but you've got a lot of people that are already going, okay, this, the, the superhero movies or the superhero market is saturated. Sure. We're, we're kind of done. So it... I mean, at the end of the day, they're not going to lose money. No, this, of course just gonna continue, Especially since they're going to put so many, like, they're going to put so many weird and side stories out. I don't think anybody was really clamoring for Shang-Chi. I mean, everybody likes Thor, and they did a good job of transforming Thor from a serious, this is important, to almost a goddamn comedy. Right. Like, now it's, hey, he's a friend from work, and all sorts of stuff. Like, he's, in a way, Chris Hemsworth kind of became a comedy actor, and I'm going to back that of, what did you think of him in Men in Black? Comedy actor kind of role going on? Like, yeah, he's getting to the point where he's almost getting uh, typecast. I did have a moment of watching the movie, and even though the, uh, obviously, Chris Hemsworth and the... Teresa, uh, what was her name again? I, I saw you look it up. Uh, Teresa. <laughs> uh... I, I don't know. She's just not on my radar of an actress yet. She does a really good job. I'm not saying she's a bad actress. It's just there was that chemistry in Thor Ragnarok that they did a really good job. So it almost was like recreating that. And I'd say quotation marks in space. But yeah, it was in space. So Chris, Chris Hemsworth is kind of getting... To, to Tessa Thompson, sorry, uh, getting typecast in these roles. He kind of played the same pretty boy role in Ghostbusters remake. He played the same pretty boy role in, like I said, M- MIB, International. He's getting a little typecast, but it's one of those things that he does do it very well. So he's going to be burdened by his own success. And so, right. so you could see... Him having a similar role. I mean, maybe they change that. Maybe with Thor Love and Thunder, which is a just a porno, personally. But uh, but if you're going to have Thor Love and Thunder, that, that's, is that what he names each, each breast? <laughs> Love and Thunder? <laughs> nice. Sorry, that's what went through my head. No, my, yeah, my you, mind. and you're pantomiming <laughs> on an audio medium. Well done. I'm going to call you out. So... <laughs> So it's maybe they give that role a more serious bit of Thor loses his ability to lift Odin. I mean, if you go follow the comics, like he Do you mean Molnir and not his dead father because you definitely said Odin. Oh, I left Odin. Oh, my bad. I didn't say Odin. Well, maybe I did. I'm tired. It's like so Thor's inability to lift his dead dad, swing him around. <laughs> Thor's inability to lift Molnir could be. Because of, in the comics, uh, Nick Fury whispers something into uh, Thor's ear that right. basically makes him doubt everything. And uh, spoilers there, I know, but I'm going to leave it there. Um, so it could be a case where he's no longer able to do it, and then this other girl picks up Molnir and ta-da, she's now Thor. Now I wonder if they're going to retcon or do anything with the fact that it's, you know, uh, 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 oh God, I can't even think of her name now. Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman, there we go. The fact that it's Natalie Portman again. Right. Is, I don't think she's going to be playing the same character. Oh, I think she is. She's still going to be playing mm-hmm. Jane. So you think Especially with be the Jane? name of the movie called Love and Thunder. Okay, so you think they're going to go a different route? I don't know. I, I, I honestly don't know what route they're going with. I was shocked. I thought it was only... I, I double-checked the article that I was reading that said Natalie Portman basically playing female Thor and made sure I wasn't reading The Onion. <laughs> the, the, okay. small, the, the, the skinny of the small people going to... Well, she's excited about getting ripped. She's like, this is my uh, Comic-Con. She's I mean, Marvel does have that effect on it. It's a thing. No, money has that effect. <laughs> Hey, I'm go- again, there's nothing that a liberal application of money cannot fix. You want to be 112 pounds and barely lift this prop hammer? Now we're going to make you do sit-ups, push-ups, everything else, and then she's going she's gonna to swing Odin around over her head. <laughs> I can't believe I slipped up if I did. I don't know. Anyway, so I guess ultimately that's my concern of the, uh, of the oversaturation. 
I wonder if they're going to focus on some of these not so major characters in a way of like they haven't announced anything for another Avengers but I think they're going to obviously do they're going to have to reassemble Avengers at some point for if they're going to be dealing with the Eternals I think they're or the Celestials themselves uh, they might have to make room for X-Men I know that it's essentially, I don't know if I'm doing a spoiler for the rest of what you wrote, but I know they're I've also talked about Fantastic Four. I did not write it down, but that is definitely where I was leading to. I think Fantastic Four is going to be done first because it's been the longest since a Fantastic Four movie's been out. Uh, wrong. They rebooted Fantastic Four only a couple of years ago. Yeah, and they just, just came out, and they just came out with an X-Men movie. Uh, okay, ish. Dark Phoenix is an X-Men movie. Yeah. 100%. So they just came out with an X-Men movie. So giving that Maybe a little... that's their plan, is instead of uh, assembling the Avengers, it's their their reboot, the reboot, essentially the reboot of either X-Men or Fantastic Four, or uh, a combination of the three. Well... Is they are they going to have the situation pan out then? I don't want to give spoilers, but from what I've did a little research on, X Men has a very their theme is that the normal people are afraid of mutants, right? And the normal people are afraid of super superheroes and superpowers and stuff. So, do you think that movies might start gearing toward making the common people? afraid of superheroes to then be able to introduce X-Men to fill that role of no we get it this is this is the life that kind of this is how superheroes are because you remember Avengers are celebrated for the most part like yay the Avengers are here yay this and this and this like they're coming to save us how do you get X-Men to fit thematically X-Men really fits in a world where the world's against them not crazy superpowers and all these other things but it's much more isolated then you could build from it you could build you know sentinels and other crazy things coming off of there galacticus and whatnot but start small with normal people are afraid of mutants using that term again mutant is a negative term do you see that instead of enhanced enhanced or heroes i mean again right no super, I get it, I get super it. soldier serum like stuff like that they're mutants. They're freaks. I mean, I would love to see Wolverine and Spider-Man run around causing havoc. That'd be great. Yeah. Bucky, that'd be a pretty fantastic Bucky, movie. Bucky picks up the mantle for Captain America. So Bucky is now, or Winter Soldier is now Captain America. The Wolverine and Spider-Man team up with Captain America. So now you got that full, like crossover that full that full crossover but just in the proper continuity going and fighting up against um other movies that haven't been announced but people are waiting for because there are a few that are still on the docket guardians of the galaxy 3 of course that's obviously got slated back a little bit because of the little snafu Bla- with black panther 2 black panther 2 needs to come out as well um but obviously james gunn had the little snafu where he was no longer employed by Disney for a while. So that's probably why we're not seeing any Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy in 21 or 22, in 2021, 2022, because he was doing uh, DC movies. Right. So it, it makes sense that there's going to be a, a backlog on that. And that makes me wonder, too, is that going to affect any of the storyline? Because it looked like they were going to introduce Adam Warlock in yeah. end of part two. Well, now that continuity is over. Does that help or hinder the next storylines. Hmm. So it's a lot to think about. It's a lot to... I mean, Spider-Man's another issue as well because they're still partially owned by Sony, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. So they're still limited to what they could do with Spider-Man, which makes it vague of like, well, we're going to throw him out there and wait till we could buy it back or something. So... There's a lot to think about. There's a lot to wonder, and there's a part that says you don't want to get too excited because these are teasers and trailers, and these are all ideas that are down the pop- pipeline. Uh, I am a little intimidated in terms of having to deal with several hours of stuff, especially with the Disney Plus. Disney Plus does worry me. It could be a heavy load of stuff that you have to be like, okay, well, we want to see this, but WandaVision spells out a lot of stuff for... 
you know, for Doctor Strange, and are you ready to watch this one? Like, uh, all right, let me sit for eight and a half hours to watch this one show to then go watch this one movie. You know, for somebody that is a co-host of a a podcast about pop culture, you really don't like pop culture. No, I love pop culture. (laughs) I just, I well, but not about pop culture, though. We established that. That's true. Geekery in its finest. I am a larper. I am a video gamer. You are my pop culture guru. You need to keep me. Then I will. I will be more than happy to take the sacrifice and watch these shows and give you cliff notes. Uh, I will happily spoil this for you. (laughs) Awesome. So I think that does it for us here just today. It's a little bit of an extended episode, but uh, there was a lot about Comic-Con that had a lot to talk about from some movies that are going to be interesting to some comics that are going to be animated now, and I could hear the X-Men, but (laughs) to old favorites like Picard coming back and doing what he does best. To possible sleeper hits from, you know, Witcher or Walking Dead, or should we even be bold enough to say that Top Gun's gonna be best movie? It's Top Gun, totally gonna break. End games. End games. Right, yeah. <laughs> I put it down now. Throw me for it right now. Y'all get, get the sucker now. bets ready. Yeah, yeah. There we go. There's no way that Top Gun is not gonna beat. <laughs> Endgame. Like anybody actually saw that. Anyway. (laughs) That's all, folks. That's all. Hey, 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 hey. (laughs) Copyright infringements. Anyway, I'm Dusty Red. I'm Dusty White. And as you like to say, that we are all geeks. To be otherwise may very well mean to live without passion. Good night. Thank you for listening to another episode of Grey Muscle Geekery with Dusty Red and Dusty White. You can support our continued geekery at our Patreon website patreon.com slash graymuzzlegeekery. Be sure to check back often as we start to add geek cred levels. You can send your questions and comments to us at graymuzzlegeekery at gmail.com or find us on Twitter at graymuzzlegeek. We can be found on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Buzzsprout. And a special thank you to Pepper Coyote for our intro theme. And if you like what you heard, you can find more of his stuff on Spotify, Patreon, or directly from his Bandcamp page.